Powerboating to Miami is where it started. It's a birthplace. It's a great lifestyle. It's fast cars, super cool boats that go really fast, and um, girls. Well, boat racing in Miami, I mean, it started here. This is where it all became, where it all happened. You know, this is the environment, this is the vibe. There is no place on the planet that could be more home to offshore powerboat racing than right here in Sunny Isles Beach. Offshore powerboat racing is probably the most fun you can have with your clothes on. These guys are independently wealthy individuals for the most part, and this is what they do on their weekends. They don't fish, they don't golf, they go offshore powerboat racing. This is what we call jewelry right here. It's boat jewelry. I'm guessing the waves are going to be three to four. Uh, it's going to be relatively hot, means there's not a lot of lift. Thirty-foot skater with a pair of twin 2.5-liter mercury outboards. You got to get a good jump on the start. Jay's got to keep his eye on that pace, folks. We're coming at him. We're coming at him with everything we got. Bully off. When you're watching this TV show, you're gonna see that there's two different types of boats on the water. There's a V-bottom boat, and a V slices through the water. Whereas the catamaran packs air in that tunnel and goes on top of the water. Catamaran's 30 miles an hour faster, just because the, it's basically a wing flying across the top of the water as the V-bottom goes through the water. In every one of these boats, you're gonna see two people on board. One guy is the driver, and his only job is to take the steering wheel and turn it and keep the heading. The other gentleman is the throttle man. The throttle man controls everything else on the boat. He's got the throttles, he's got the trim tabs for the attitude of the boat. The throttle man is really the guy in the boat that's running it. The other guy's making sure he doesn't hit anything. Before the main event on Sunday, another race heats up in Sunny Isles Beach. An endurance race pitting boat against boat through the unpredictable waters off the coast of Miami. Sunny Isles Beach promoter Brad Schoenwald describes the legacy behind the Bimini Run. Offshore powerboat racing was that competitive spirit to say my boat was faster than yours. Well, how did you prove it? Race to Bimini and back, and whoever gets to the bar last buys the, you know, pays for the booze or whatever. And so what we have done recently is we have brought back that same competitive spirit for endurance racing to race to Bimini and come back as fast as you can go, but of course done it under a more structured, proper environment with rules, uh, fly dive rescue helicopters in case there is an incident, permits, that type of thing. Please be careful. Remember we talked before, this is open ocean racing. Of course it's a race, you want to get there and get back as fast as you can go, but ultimately we want you to come back. It's 
changes by the second. Every wave, every corner, every wind condition, it changes like that. And that, that's kind of what's intriguing about offshore racing. You could go on that same course and one minute later, it's a completely different course. Well, for one, they're out of, they're out of sight of shore, right? So even though we have assets about every five miles along the way, five miles is not sight distance for this curvature of the earth out, out there in the open ocean. You're literally running by yourself. Something goes wrong, we have to kind of go, well, they should have been here by now. Let's go check this area. You've also got the Gulf Stream. They could be in New York by now. Next on the Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series. This is a very, very dangerous sport. Let me make no bones about it. You're constantly testing yourself against Poseidon. Tragically, people died doing this sport. There's no question about it. It is dangerous. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. This is a very, very dangerous sport. Let me make no bones about it. Hitting water. Water, even though it gives, it doesn't really give. I'd rather smack face first into a concrete wall than hit the water at that kind of speed because it hurts. If you're unconscious, water, to my knowledge, has yet to be breathable by humans. So you've got to survive that peril as well. You're constantly testing yourself against Poseidon. Some days he gets you, some days you get him, you know what I mean? You know, all of a sudden there's a rogue wave that comes across the course, you know? That's like someone throwing a speed bump in your, in your track all of a sudden. Tragically, people died doing this sport. There's no question about it. It is dangerous. Uh, if you get thrown out of a boat, there's a good chance, you know, whether you get run over, whether, you know, a lot of times it's just you snap your neck. I mean, this is serious stuff out there. The boats can barrel roll, they can hook and spin, but on the hook and spin, the bow catches and it violently suits the boat either right or left instantaneously. So they go from 70 to 100 mile an hour to zero in about 10 feet. In an ocean environment like we have here in Miami, the, the boats stuff, which means the boats fly off a wave. As the next wave is coming, they hit the transom, it knocks the bow down and the bow stuffs into the next wave. The danger is now the water rushing up the deck at 80 or 100 miles an hour, and it breaks people's necks backwards. The boat is set up improperly. The boat will lift, the bow will catch air, and at that point, the control of the boat is out of your hands. You're in God's hands. We have crossed the line a couple of times, and, and fortunately, we didn't turn the boat over or whatever, but, but that was luck. And then we go, okay, we're not gonna do that again. The sport is getting less dangerous, thank God. Um, we lost a lot of people over the years. Ambulances can't get out on the water to pick you up, so we have to come up with specialized techniques to get these guys basically up onto medical rescue boats. It, it's, a, it's a whole lot different set of techniques, so you have to have specially trained people to do it. The guys have scuba equipment on inside the boat. We put them through a dunker training so that these guys can simulate a roll, simulate a crash, and be prepared for what occurs in those next few violent seconds after a boat goes over. You know, we try to keep it as safe as possible, but this is a very unpredictable environment. In a nutshell, we're all a little bit uh, on the edge, uh, but that's, that's the beauty of it. Before the riders are cleared to take part in Sunday's race, they must first pass a series of safety drills and emergency maneuvers, preparing them for a worst case scenario on race day. disorienting being upside down. You have to plan for the canopy to fail, which would include uh, a huge fast volume of water coming in there and it creates enormous confusion. It's like being two frogs in a blender. And then you kick back, scissors kick or frog kick, however you want to do it, all right? In the event of an emergency, we want them to understand that they have a safety net in their own boats 
in the form of air tanks. The danger is real. I mean, it's you're in an open cockpit boat going really, really fast in the ocean. So if we get thrown out of the boat for whatever reason, the divers come in after us and they're going to hand us a regulator. We need to know how to purge it and get oxygen to us so we don't drown. Generally, these things, uh, you know, go south very quickly. A lot of times these guys get disoriented. Quite a few years ago, we rolled over and on the way out of the boat, one of the engines hit me in the head. If I hadn't had a helmet on it, I'd be dead. The next step where I have to tow him and then he has to tow me, so that's always a pain. If you have an injured crew member to deal with, you need to be able to help transport them to a safety vessel. They teach you how to cradle their head in case of a possible neck injury. Okay. Tyler. <laughs> hey, yeah, it has its danger, sure. Huh? Any motorized sport is dangerous. It's, it's hardcore, no doubt. As some of the racers continue preparing their boats for Sunday's race, Another competition heats up off the coasts of Sunny Isle Beach. The Bimini Run, a 100-mile endurance race pitting boat against boat through the unpredictable waters off the shores of Miami. Angel to the race control. You guys got that? Call it on mark. After all the boats return safely to the coast, the final results were tallied up, and father and son team Bob and John T took home the top prize from the Bimini Run. Driver John T talks about racing the Bimini Run with his father Bob T. There's nothing like racing with a veteran who uh, who knows what it's like to do it perfectly, and there's nothing like uh, racing with your dad who's gonna who's gonna hold you to that perfect line and. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of back and forth in the cockpit. It's just like uh, any other family relationship. It translates. You know, um, he holds me to a high standard. I hold myself to a high standard. You know, out here, uh, you know, you want to be perfect. So, it's it's interesting. Uh, I wouldn't take it any other way. You know, every time in the boat, I learn a lot. We all get better as a team, and uh, that's what matters. We came over with a victory. Day two. 24 hours before Sunday's race. Back at the dry pits, each team begins prepping and testing their equipment against the choppy waters of Miami. One racer in particular, notorious for his rigorous testing, is 63-year-old team owner and throttle man, Bob T. I like racing boats because, first of all, I love the water. There's certainly more of a challenge than, uh, to me than other types of racing, like automobile racing. I started racing professionally after I got home from Vietnam, Cambodia. I'm 63 years old. When you ask me what my age is, I have to stop and think because I don't think about how old I am. I, I guess you could say that I don't act my age. It was boats that I was drawn to even when I was younger. It's a more challenging environment. Uh, it's an ever-moving environment. Bob Teague is tough as nails. Nobody wants to go up against Bob Teague. If you beat Bob Teague, you earn that win. All silver. Turn it down. All silver. All pro finish. Seven, eight, nine. Check. Right. The uh, sevens are in the white boxes. Check. You want anything put on now? No, because I'll probably change it before we put it in the yes, water. Will. <laughs> I like the competition a lot, but I also like the preparation a lot. You know, making a better race boat, building something that works better, dialing something in. Had quite a few things apart, so we want to make sure that uh, we have uh, no leaks. Because in our world, leaks sink the boat. Yeah. It's hard to find the perfect setup. Uh, and it's a moving target all the time. You're only as good as you are on that day. And uh, if you fall short, then you know you have to go back to the drawing board and work harder and work on your setup and everything else. You know, certainly experience pays off. Uh, you learn in any piece of equipment what its ultimate capabilities are. 
and you learn where that line is, and you try not to cross that line. It was on Friday. <laughs> well, it was. I think it was windier yesterday. Yeah. Because it was blowing in the morning yesterday. Yeah. Team Amsoil has been together now for over four years. Pretty much the same guys. Everybody on the team was experienced with me or another team at some time. So we went around and the team, the people on our team come from all corners of this nation. We meet with one thing in mind, that boat, this team winning a race. Next on the Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series. You know, we gotta dig deep. I've got four or five different credit cards, and you know, at the end of the year, I gotta pay them all off and figure out how to do it. We gotta pray that the credit card's got enough left on it after buying tires. Transaction canceled, what does that mean? Do you have another card to use or not? Let's go to the silver. The gold didn't work. Let's bump her down. <laughs> the Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Inside the dry pits of Sunny Isle Beach, a variety of different classes of boats mingle together before the big race. Each class is categorized by make, V-bottom or catamaran, or by horsepower. The higher the horsepower, the heftier the price tag to run competitively. One of the most affordable classes of racing in the OPA, Class 5, allows owners to compete without breaking the bank. The vitamin of champions must take your packs out every morning if you've got claustrophobia. Name's Randy Schluss. Yeah, I've been racing uh, 13, 14 years. I do heating and air conditioning for a living. I don't make a ton of money doing it. You know what? You gotta suck it up. The average life of a racer typically is one year to two years. They get in, they spend their money, they blow a motor, they rip a drive. Go get another one. It doesn't work like that. You, you, you spin out, you wreck something, they're out. You're talking $30,000 for a motor. I took a different approach. I kept within my budget, and it's not very big. I've got an old motor home. We sleep in the motor home. We don't stay in fancy hotels. All right, you, you handle the gas all the and I'll handle the important stuff, the beer and the ice, for after the event. Then I thought you were going to say paying for it. <laughs> gas cap. It's the way we roll here at Typhoon. But, you know, we gotta dig deep. I've got four or five different credit cards. And, you know, at the end of the year, I gotta pay them all off and figure out how to do it. We gotta pray that the credit card's got enough left on it after buying tires. Transaction canceled, what does that mean? Do you have another card to use or not? Let's go to the silver. <laughs> the gold didn't work. Let's bump her down. Authorizing? Yes! We win! The race will be over before we fill this thing up. It's tough, but uh, we make it happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nobody's got a trophy, bitch. I got one. His real name's Jimmy Welsh. Look at, look at trope is, is, is that how you guys spooned last night? <laughs> Everybody on my team gets a nickname. So one day I asked Jimmy, I said, Jimmy, give me a nickname. It's your choice. You can take either one. We either call you Peacock, because you like to walk around, or we're going to call you Trophy Bitch. It's your choice, but you got to pick one. It's amazing. He's still climbing around. If I can't reach some bolt in the very, very back or front or underneath that motor, all right, Bubba, I'll get it. He's got that deep raspy throat. I'm getting a, getting a beer ready for the boys. Like I said, I like my Chianti. Gotta get on the podium, baby. I met him 14 years ago. He's been with me every single year. Uh, best man, best friend that anybody could have, and that's how our team works. 
we left the battery on last night, that probably wasn't too smart, right? The way we roll, Jack. We should have had this plugged in last night. As Team Typhoon troubleshoots their misfortune in the pits, Team Amsoil begins making its way toward the race course. Now we have some real sophisticated systems for counting laps. Guy, it's tape with numbers on them. And every time we go through the finish line, the driver has to pull off a piece of tape. <laughs> it's especially good right now because I have a, a super good race boat and uh, uh, one of the best, if not the best, um, driver sitting next to me in the boat. The two people working together, you know, develop that trust and, and it's communication. It's al almost like being in combat. If you're in an infantry combat, you don't talk. You think alike. Okay? And with us, you know, of course we talk, but we think alike. You know, we feel the boat the same. Race one, Super Cat Light. Three catamaran boats patiently wait for their chance at victory. As the green flag flies, Team Phoenix Parts takes the early lead, followed by Team Amsoil and Team Infinity. Infinity begins to challenge Amsoil for second. Phoenix Parts continues leading the race, with Amsoil back in second. Amsoil takes the inside line and challenges Phoenix Parts for the lead. Phoenix Parts tears away and stays up front. Team Amsoil charges again and passes Phoenix Parts for the lead. Phoenix Parts struggles to stay competitive with Amsoil's hefty lead. One lap to go. Team Amsoil continues dominating the race. Team Amsoil takes the checkered flag. Followed by Phoenix Parts in second and Infinity in third. Next on the Amsoil Offshore Power Boat Racing Series. The first year we raced together in, in a turbine boat, we'd get our butts kicked by everybody. There was a bunch of yelling the first year in the boat. I never yelled at somebody so much in my life. And I'm screaming, I'm like, what the F are you doing? He goes, I know how to drive a boat. I said, you could have fooled me. And this is in the middle of a race. The Amsoil Offshore Power Boat Racing Series is brought to you by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. As the morning sun makes its way across the beaches of Sunny Isles, another race team prepares themselves for the first race of the season, Team Geico. I freaking love Miami. I love Miami. There's something about being on the water at high tide on a sunny day. It's the, the thrill-seeking, 
push, push for more mixed with where I'm at peace. I cannot wait to get back into that boat. Uh, to Scotty, I was in the car and I looked over him and I said, Scotty, I cannot wait to get in that boat and run her this weekend. You know, Mark steers the boat and, and my job is I control the attitude of the boat with the trim and I control the speed of the boat with the throttles. And what you really need to realize about Mark and Scott, they are good, and they are really good. You said, hey, you know what? Hey, glad we no. got delayed. No. Yeah, so I'm kind of glad we got delayed because we tested our race time, and we used to strive to test the race time anyway. You always want to test the next day. You always want to test the race time. Good one, Scotty. Lowered my blood pressure. <laughs> Scotty's a caveman. You love him what we call jewelry right here. Boat jewelry. Mark's the ego of the team. The pretty boy, he talks well, he's articulate. So Mark's the guy you want to talk to where Scotty kind of sits in the background, but Scotty runs the boat. I like getting better. I like working on something that you keep getting better. And our team has gone through a lot. You know, it, it, to get where we are now has not been easy. It's, it's been a long, 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 hard road. The first year we raced together in, in a turbine boat, we'd get our butts kicked by everybody. There was a bunch of yelling the first year in the boat, to the point where you couldn't understand from the shore what was being said. I never yelled at somebody so much in my life. And I'm screaming, I'm like, what the F are you doing? He goes, I know how to drive a boat. I said, you could have fooled me. And this is the middle of a race. He, he, I just remember him being so mad. He was like, oh. And we struggled for a year, you know? And actually, um, we didn't win our first race until our second year of the boat together. The, the friendship became a brotherhood. And that's, us in the boat now is a, it's a team. And the rest is history. Six years, six world championships, the, the, probably the most recognizable boat in all of offshore racing. But she is beautiful. I mean, honestly, look at that thing. Now, if that doesn't give you wood, then you need to go back to man school. Um, I would say it's probably the most technologically advanced race boat that's ever been built. It's got turbine motors, it's got a telemetry system, so I've got a crew and a laptop that monitors my gauges as we're racing, so I don't have to look down. When you're going to a football field a second, you don't want to look down at the gauges for too long. 190 miles an hour. 190 miles an hour to make a boat go that fast without flipping over, blowing up, sinking, crashing, whatever, is a tremendous feat to make it do it consistently, even more. Back over at the Team Typhoon camp, the team works for the upcoming race. We left the battery on last night. That probably wasn't too smart, right? The way we roll, Jack. From what I've noticed from all the guys that are actually in it, you know, it's that you're just a tick off compared to the rest of your friends. We should have had this plugged in last night. <laughs> There's no way we can lose. It's a winning combination. Leave the battery on, listen to bad music. Let me brush my teeth and go do my breathalyzer. If I'm a spectator, I want to watch the physicals. I don't want to watch the race. I want to watch these guys come in, blow that breathalyzer, because everyone's got this excuse. They were on daylight savings time. They should have stopped drinking an hour ago. And then you watch them come in. Men. Men. Like you can just tell he's nervous. You know, his eyes are all bugged out. What's Lance Armstrong's? The Olympic peddler, five-time Tour de France. I don't know. Like comparing, like pretty close. He does everything else except the breathalyzer. Like he's waiting to the last minute before physicals are over. And just my boat name. Boat name. Your name. Boat number. Your position in the boat. What's my boat number? And then he kind of slowly crawls over. And you just see him praying. 
please go green. Good to go. Let's go home, pack up the truck. We won. <laughs> you didn't pass, did you? You didn't pass, did you? Yeah, class five, we got a lot of good guys that we race against, you know. All righty, Warren, big speed. Absolutely. Mr. Mitigator, Mitigator himself. Most of them are fairly seasoned teams or whatever, so, you know, everybody's good. Every one of these checkered flags is from wins. Warren kicks ass, man. Unfortunately, today he's going down. <laughs> All these guys got big horsepower, and, you know, which means they've got a potential to break. Then you got Johnny Saris, you know, young kid coming up, still a little green, will probably always be green. Um, good kid. He's a punk, but he's a good kid. Uh, he likes to try to take me down. Here comes morning, second guys. place. Second place. Second place. So me and him kind of go head to head, and he actually has got my old boat. I'm Johnny Saris. I'm 18 years old, and I race boats. Hey, Jace, man, I can't get it to thread in. I race with my dad. Sure you're going in the right one? That's it. That's it? That's it? Yeah, it just turns and locks. Oh. All right. The relationship I have with my dad on land is really, really good. You know, some people don't get along with their dad really well. I do. You're good to go. All right. Thank you, sir. We are set. Have a good day, man. Let's go race. But on the water, we can never agree. You know, we're one of the few boats that doesn't have an intercom between our helmets, so we usually just punch each other in the arm and point at stuff. We need an intercom. But other than that, it works out really well. You know, you get up to the bigger classes, class one and extreme and super cat like, there really isn't as many boats and the competition isn't as tough as it is in class five and class six. That's really where the good racing's at. If we're out there racing, we're running 75 miles an hour with 12 boats on either side of us. It's, it's a rush. You're lined up for the start, there's 10 or 12 of you, and that's where the adrenaline starts kicking in. The first turn usually comes 30 seconds after that, and nobody usually pulls away by then. My favorite person to race against is without a doubt Randy, because let's face it, I have his old boat, and it sucks to get beat with your old boat. For the first year I ran the boat, I chased him around. We didn't have the boat figured out. He was really, he was kicking our asses. But coming into this season, my father and I really got the boat dialed in. We got the right prop, the right setup. And I think we're gonna make Randy regret ever selling that boat, without a doubt. He's gonna, he's gonna think twice about the black one. Next on the Amsoil Offshore Power Boat Racing Series. We're showed up, we're under the crate, we get the straps of the boat. I think Mark saw it. Like, where's the plugs? It's one of those simple things in boating. Always check your drain plugs. What the f well, is this about? I forgot the plugs again, so instead of having the spares inside the back of the car. Again? Talk. The Amsoil Offshore Power Boat Racing Series is brought to you by Amsoil. The first in synthetics. To get a boat in the water, it's a big process. It's almost a dance, a logistical dance. It's all got to go right. Uh, there are, you know, there's frustration. Sometimes you get rusty in between a race. You know, you got you know, two weeks down. There's a lot of changes. Somebody forgets something like drain plugs. Plugs are little screws you put in the back of the boat and you take them out when you take the boat out of the water so when you're washing the boat or if it rains or any water that got in the boat during the race, it just drains right out the back. We're showed up, we're under the crate, we get the straps of the boat. I think Mark saw it. Like, where's the plugs? It's one of those simple things in boating. Always check your drain plugs. A mariner's rule. What the f well, is this about? I forgot the plugs again instead of having the spares inside the back of the car. Again? Talk. I had to go back and get them. How I long can it f***ing take to get Well, plus? the trap is terrible here because of traffic. We're sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and we almost missed the start of the race. Seven hours of prep. Two million dollar boat. Two dollar fifty plugs. Drain plugs. The boy blunder. So is it, are they in? Boy, now you're boy blunder. Wait, back to boy blunder. Look, I'm talking 85 miles an hour from the time I left here 
until I got to the pits, and I got lost once. The littlest thing is disaster to us. For what we're doing, there's no room for that. There's no room for error of paying attention. In this case, it was a, a, a drain plug. What if it's something else? You know, what if it's a, what if it's a fuel line? What if it's a power steering line that's, that's put in backwards? What's that gonna cost me? It's gonna cost me my throttle man's life, my life, my business when I wreck a $2 million piece of uh, equipment. Great crew, does their job, but that's a red flag. Next on the Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series. Some guy's driving around in a pace boat in front of us with a yellow flag saying, get your boats, get going, you zip her up. At that point, the adrenaline goes through the roof. You're like, you're jacked. So, I mean, if you get scared or nervous going into first turn to decide, wow, we're just gonna, no, race is over, you lose. But you can count on one thing, Typhoon will get them. We're coming at them, we're coming at them with everything we got, booyah. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Race 2, the Extreme Class. Three boats enter the rugged waters of Sunny Isles Beach for a chance at victory. Flag flies. Team Citron and Team Geico make a mad dash for the lead. As the two teams battle for the lead, Team Lamborghini slowly fades away in third. Back up front, Geico and Citron continue battling for first. Suddenly, Geico takes a slight lead in front of their competition. Citron refuses to let up and creeps back alongside Geico for a neck and neck battle. Mechanical issues cause Lamborghini to stop their pursuits of a win. Back up front, Citron takes the lead. Geico takes the inside line and pulls away with the lead. As the checkered flag flies, Team Geico takes the win, followed by Team Citron in second. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. is going to be we're starting out in lane five so we don't have a the inside lane which means we got to get a good jump on the start jay's got to keep his eye on that pace boat we're having issues with our gas tank because quite honestly we have no idea how big it is and uh 
It seems every time at the end of the race we're running on fumes, we can barely make it back to the dock. And yesterday we went to fill it up, it didn't, it wouldn't take as much gas as it normally does, which kind of makes us nervous. As much as you feel like you're in control, you don't think the guy next to you is in control. And he's looking at you like, you're not in control either. You're like, ah, ah, and now you gotta turn. <laughs> So, I mean, if you get scared or nervous going in the first turn to decide, wow, we're just going to have races over, you lose. But you kind of want to think Typhoon will get them. We're coming at them, we're coming at them with everything we got. Bully y'all. In the final race of the day, teams Typhoon and Ceres gear up for their long awaited battle in the open ocean. Race three, class five. Seven boats line up in the most competitive class of the weekend. The rivalry between Team Ceres and Team Typhoon will be settled here today off the coast of Sunny Isles Beach. As the green flag flies, seven boats race toward the first turn. Team Saris begins to pull away from the pack and takes the early lead. Followed by the Mighty Max in second, Mitigator in third, and Team Typhoon in fourth. Typhoon jumps ahead of Mitigator for third. Meanwhile, Team Saris continues a healthy lead up front. Suddenly, Team Mighty Max begins to creep closer and closer to the race leaders. Typhoon continues battling in the back of the pack. Mighty Max takes the lead. At the checkered flag, the Mighty Max take the win, followed by Team Saris in second and Team Typhoon in third. We had an awesome battle with Team Optima and the Mighty Max team. Had a great start. We were the first one to the first turn and uh, had a couple of guys there with us, mixed it up really good, and uh, it was a lot of fun. As the sun sets over Miami, the team celebrate their first round of racing at Sunny Isles Beach. But for these riders and their teams, the battle for the Series End Championship has just begun.